I'm mixing substrate again. It's one of my hobbies. I'm always grateful I have a spouse that's um, amused when he comes into the kitchen and finds that instead of cooking, I'm actually chopping sphagnum moss for, sub for substrate instead of, you know, preparing dinner because um, it's probably more likely. That's not, I do make dinner too, but you know. Um, so what I've done is I've taken regular long grain sphagnum moss and like I've done in some other videos, I've chopped it until it is pretty tiny. Um, and then it's going to be mixed into the substrate mix. And the idea is that way, if the frog ingests it, um, it's small enough to pass and not, um, impact him. So this is, uh, my Scott's fam favorite brand, Scott's premium topsoil. So some of these little bits of bark and stuff, they're in the topsoil. And this is about, uh, 60 to 70% topsoil. Um, and then I don't know exact percentages. This is one of the mixes I just sort of do while I eye it. Um, there's some sand for drainage. And then this helps it um, not compact. This is a reptile bark. You can use regular orchid bark as long as it's straight bark. They're literally exactly the same thing. So I'm gonna mix this up and then we'll be ready to set up our little dude in his tank. So here's what it looks like mixed and dry. I am going to mist this really heavily or even um, pop, probably dump a little bit of dechlorinated water in and get it nice and damp before I put it in the tank because it will just be much simpler um, to do that first and add the damp dirt to the tank rather than trying to um, get it damp after it's in there. I've, I've done it both ways and it's really simpler if you get the dirt wet before you put it in the tank for one of these more humid setups. We're going for 60 to 75 percent humidity um, and that's true for all of the Pac-Man frog, the Ceratophorus species. So this is me making substrate with a migraine. Um, so I have topsoil, I had sand, I had orchid bark, and I had sphagnum moss, all in pretty good proportions. And what I'm looking for is about 60 to 70% dirt, and then uh, 40, 30 to 40% other ingredients, right? But it wasn't until I went to my, into my house and poured some dechlorinated water in here and started mixing it, and I'm like, something is wrong. And I forgot a very crucial ingredient, which is cocoa fiber. Um, so this is just eco, eco earth, expanded cocoa fiber, whatever you want to call it. It's all the same stuff. Um, and I'm going to add some nice handfuls of this, which has been... Um, I, I expanded it and then I dried it, which makes it even easier to crumble, even if there's some chunks of it left. Um, so in here, and again, I'm just eyeing this. I can write you down a ratio that's better, but you're looking for 60 to 70% topsoil and 30, 40% other stuff. And it's sort of, I would say actually a little bit more cocoa fiber, but otherwise fairly equal parts, sphagnum, um, orchid uh, bark or reptibark and uh, sand maybe a little bit less on the sand. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's not like a perfect recipe that if you don't hit it, it's gonna fail on you. So I'm gonna go get this damp again and mix the whole thing together. Uh, and then we'll be ready to set up our little dude. <laughs> Hey, this is my five and a half gallon tank and um, if you had been watching my Instagram or my Facebook page, it is the same five and a half gallon tank I was just using for the past while as a quarantine tank for new fire belly toads. Um, they've passed quarantine, they've been moved into the 20 long paludarium upstairs and probably in a future video not too long we'll go visit them. Um, it has been completely cleaned out, completely rinsed, cleaned with white vinegar, rinsed again with dechlorinated water so that it is um, all sterile and ready to be a new home for my baby Pac-Man frog. He'll be okay in this tank. He's probably only gonna be in this tank for a month or so. I've got a 10 gallon upstairs that's currently a dart frog tank, but those frogs are gonna get moved into a 20 gallon. Yes, there'll be a video on that. And then um, little Crowley is going to move into a 10 gallon tank, which depending on whether he is actually a he or a she, may be big enough for his entire life since they're basically sit and wait predators, AKA pet rocks. Um, but if he needs it, he can have a 20 gallon when he's full size. But um, I think they grow pretty slowly, we'll see. It's my first Pac-Man frog, so I'm excited. So what we have here is a uh, thin layer of gravel, which you can use as drainage layer. It's not my preference, it's just what I had on hand for this. And since it's a temporary tank and a small tank, I did a fairly thin drainage layer um, and it'll be fine for this. I'll be ordering more hydro balls for the new dart frog tank when I put it together next month. Um, and then those can go into the 10 gallon that I'll build for uh, Crowley out of that so and then here's our substrate mix and you can see what it looks like all nice and um, damp and crumbly and you can see the cocoa fiber in it properly now as it's all damp um, and so what I did was I put enough water in that it feels like wet to the wet to the touch I'm sorry I went out of focus it feels wet to the touch but it's not muddy and what we want to do is put enough substrate in here that he can bury himself but since he's a little bitty dude right now um, probably about 
like this is more than enough. I also need enough for the roots of my plants. So I'm going to go about like that and have it be fairly even all over. So what do we have? An inch, inch and a half, two inches. When he's an adult, I'll have like three to four inches of, of soil going on. It compacts always a little bit. So starting with a little bit extra um, than you intended to end up with never hurts. So about like that. Now I've got pothos cuttings. I've got Tritus cantia cuttings. And I have this little parlor palm that I've had for a while and it's not doing very well. So I thought I would see if some frog poop would improve it um, and get it thriving again. Obviously it will be too big if it takes off to live in um, a tank, but it can start out in there. And it's been growing in organic potting soil for, oh, probably a year. Um, and I've always watered it with, you know, just straight tap water. There's no fertilizers um, that were not organic. So it's safe to go straight into a tank. If I had just bought it, I would want to clean it out like I've described doing with my other by um, repotting it in organic potting soil and watering it um, for three to four weeks on a minimum five to six weeks would be preferable to try to like sort of clean out its system, its system of any um, fertilizers or pesticides that it could have picked up. So I'm gonna get the dirt off of this and we'll get the plants in and we'll see what that looks like in just a second. And I just added, try to get the shade on these, a little clump of dirt from my isopod bin that was just teeming, literally teeming with um, dwarf white isopods. I was trying to get them. I couldn't get quite all of them before they started disappearing. They go to ground really fast. They were um, hanging out in the bin over here, this is my isopod bin, then they were under this carrot. And so I'm, I moved it and found like a gazillion of them. And now the remaining ones have gone to ground, but um, adding uh, gray, native gray isopods that I've been breeding for a while, springtails and dwarf white isopods for the cleanup crew. All right, we have a baby Pac-Man frog habitat. So I think it looks pretty good for just a few plant cuttings. Um, my, this is the water dish I had, again, sterilized with white vinegar, rinsed with dechlorinated water. Um, I've sort of nestled it down lower in the dirt so that it's an easier climb in. And then I need to probably maybe go find a few bigger rocks, but I had, I have some native rocks that I've used in fish tanks and stuff. So I know their um, chemistry is safe for water. It's not gonna mess with it or anything. And so I've sort of set this in here to make it shallower and to make a clear little ramp. I may mess with that and I may go grab some um, rocks from the pet store that are meant to go in like fish tanks like the round ones i've just run out of most of my rocks they're in something or another but i didn't want to use any more of this gravel because even though he's a baby he could already uh, ingest some of this uh if he thought if he was going after a cricket that was in the water dish or something and there's a little i made him a little burrow i don't know if he'll use it or not but i burrowed down underneath the cork to get him started if he's scared when he first goes in the tank so we'll take this inside and we'll um get the little dude in the tank